We are now going to be doing what's called a weekly warm-up. Okay, it's different from a daily review, and it's different from the math Olympics, but it's also really similar to them. Instead of having two questions for a daily review and a math Olympics, um, they are now, weekly reviews are eight questions long. You will work on them on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. You will work with them in a group. The biggest difference between these are that they are for a grade. So these weekly reviews will be taken for an in-class grade. You will be allowed to use, um, or you'll be allowed to work with a partner. There are absolutely no calculators on these in questions. So for the whole week, we are doing warm-ups. There should be no calculators. We don't really need one for success makes. Patrick. Great question. So whoever your partner or your group is on Monday, you're working with them on Wednesday and Friday. If you were to finish the weekly warm-up on, let's say, Wednesday, you enter it into grade cam. You're going to get a grade. That's going to be the grade that I put in the progress book. Then on Friday, you will just do success maker instead of working on your warm-up because you're already done. Does that make sense? So please take your time. Make sure you have the answers that you want. Work with one another. I'll do a great job. You will keep this until... Whenever you enter your answers in the grade cam. Okay? Show your work. If you're working the partner, don't just put what they put. Show your work. Talk through it. Make sure you're explaining it. My biggest thing is if you, when you get to your partner or your group, look around. Does someone else need to join a group? Okay? Include them into your group. Do not go to your partner and instantly start on question number one. It's not a race. Make sure everyone has a partner, everyone has someone to work with. That's the most important thing. Are we good? Okay, no calculators. You may begin. I'll use about five, ten minutes. Raise your hand if you've ever been putt-putting before or to a miniature golf course. Perfect. So I always call them putt-putting. I do not say miniature golf. I just, it's always been known as putt-putt to me. So what are some things that you remember from that putt-putt course? What are some unique things about putt-putt courses? Maddie. Perfect. There's a lot of obstacles you need to get around. Hudson. Good. There's usually a lot of shortcuts. Aiden. Um, they are much, much smaller than actual golf. Yes, they are. A lot smaller than actual golf. Tyson. They have like some of the and stuff. They're what? Good. They are like, either, you see most putt putting courses when you go on like a vacation area. See a lot. The part of the exercise plan, like how many takes it should take. How many takes it should take to do? Aiden. Um, usually the ball throwing is different. With regular golf, um, there's like yellow, maybe white. But then with um, mini golf, you usually have other kinds of colors. Perfect. Okay, I want you to think about most putt putting courses have something, and it's one of your language arts terms, vocabulary terms. The course will have a theme. Okay, so most putt-putting courses have a theme throughout the whole course. Okay. What we are going to be doing is we are going to create a putt-putt course on a coordinate grid paper in groups. Okay, this is going to be practice for our geometry. We went through geometry really quick. 
So we are going to go back and make sure that we are understanding our geometry, finding area especially. Okay. So let me go ahead and pass out to you the rubric. Here we go. Going through our rubric for this project. You are going to be designing a mini golf course and need to purchase the carpet for the course. Okay, so if you are on a putt putting course, you have all those obstacles. The obstacles do not have carpet underneath them. So you are just finding the area of the carpet that you actually put on. The carpet does not need to go under the obstacle, so you will need to figure out how much carpet to purchase. You will be working in groups of two or three to create nine whole mini golf course. So your whole group will need nine holes. If you are in a group of three, let's say it's Hudson, Aiden, and Maggie, how many holes does each person create? Three, right? If we have two people, it's just Ella and Jacob. You will have, Ella will be creating four of them, Jacob will be creating four of them, and they do the ninth one together. It may seem like a little more work, but when you're in a group of three, it's a lot harder to come up with um, decisions because you have one extra person to state their opinion. So it can be a little more challenging. Both have their um, pros and cons. The design of the holes, bowl point number two, the design of the holes for this project will be worth 36 points and four points per hole. Yeah, I do notice people looking around trying to figure out who the partner is going to be. I am assigning you a partner, so don't even worry about that. Okay. So each hole is worth four points. Each person in the group will be responsible for designing three holes each. If you have less than three people, remember, the ninth hole will be designed or developed as a group. Okay, the next part. This is really important here. Each hole design must have five or more obstacles that are different types of polygons. Each person must use at least one of each of the following polygons. So rectangle, triangle, parallelogram, rhombus, trapezoid, hexagon, octagon, and you can use a choice of or a shape of your choice that's different than the ones above. So let's go over an example. We have Hudson, Aiden, and Maggie in a group. Maggie is designing holes one through three. Hole number one. How many obstacles does she need to have in hole number one? Hudson, five. Could she have six? Yes, it says five or more obstacles. Minimum is five. You can have as much as you want, though. Okay, eight is going to do holes four through six. He needs to have five obstacles in each of his holes. Same with Hudson. But here's where we have a lot of people who make their mistakes. Maggie and her three holes that she has, she's creating. She has to use all of these polygons. Aiden needs to use all of these polygons in his three holes that he creates. Same with Hudson. So I'm going to give you an example here. If Maggie in hole number one uses five rectangles, and that's it. Hole number two, she just uses five triangles, and that's it. Her third hole would have to have what? as an obstacle. Tyson. All the other polygons. So in her third hole, she need a parallelogram, a rhombus, a trapezoid, a hexagon, an octagon, and another shape. Okay? Each person needs to use all of those. Player. This hopefully makes sense all at the end and all come together. The next bullet point. Each hole design your hole will be a square instead of a circle. Your hole will be one of these squares. 
and that it hole is nine square inches. So three inches by three inches, or one block. In a starting shape, that is 36 square inches. So that's six inches by six inches, or two blocks by two blocks square, where you place the ball to begin. So you do not need carpet in the hole and on the starting and your five or more obstacles. Um, each hole design must be colored using colored pencils or markers. That would be your final project, needs to be colored. The course as a whole needs to have a theme. So Maggie Hudson and Aiden all need to come up with a theme together and everyone's hole has to use that theme. So examples, you can use Disney, you can have dinosaurs, candy bars. Please be creative. Think of something that you would like to do. Okay? But if we do Disney, and Maggie does Lion King, and Aiden does Monsters, Inc., then Hudson does food. Do we have a theme between all three of us? No. So Hudson, you would do what? A Disney. Give me an example. Ratatouille. Okay, so all nine of them now are a Disney theme, so it would be good. Next bullet point. Each hole design must have an answer page filled out with all the work shown to solve the areas for the cost of the carpet. Each hole will need one of these papers. This is where you will show your work on how you find the areas of all your obstacles and of the actual hole in the course. And you'll find also how much it costs for the carpet on that hole. So everyone has to fill out one for each hole. So there will be nine for the course. Carpet. Not right now, we might bring it. Okay? Um, Okay, that's worth five points. Each hole design must have a par score. What is a par score? In golf, Patrick. Good. How many it should take? Okay, so an example at Heatherwood Golf Course. Hole number one is a par four. They say that you should make that ball from the start into the hole in four shots. Usually it takes me like six or seven shots. Very good. It takes me longer. More shots. Get more practice. Take more time up. Okay. Uh, so that is your par, what it should take you. If you are uh, par four, you get five shots. You're one over par. What is that called? You know? No? A bogey. Two over. It's double bogey, three over, triple bogey. I don't think they even have anything for four over. But um, if you're one under, does anyone know what it is? Aiden? It is a birdie. Two under par. Emma? Eagle. And then if you get uh, in one shot, it's called a? Okay, scorecard. I'll give you an example of one of those. Then your project hole design will uh, be done on grid paper. Each block on the grid paper will be equal to three inches in real life. So scale. One block equals three inches. So one of these squares is three inches by three inches. Groups will review and evaluate each other's group courses designs for accuracy. The group will then be given the opportunity to correct any errors to the work. If a mistake is found after peer review, the reviewer will lose credit for, on their design. That's worth 10 points. So the example would be, these three have completed their work. They hand it to these three for peer review. They find some mistakes. They tell them to fix them. They fix them. I go in and grade it, and I still see that there's mistakes on their work. Who loses the points? This group does, because they did not catch it. Not this group. 
This group has to catch the mistake. Tyson. You gotta make sure they fix it. You're their peer reviewer. Okay? Alright, the next thing. At the conclusion of the project, one select course will be awarded the best in Spring Row, and we will play a game of miniature golf with that course. And I'll show you how we'll do that in a second. Alright? Here are some examples. This is an example of a hole. It was a par four. This theme is Monsters or Monsters, Inc. I can't remember, but they're, each of these um, obstacles is a monster. Okay, so again, if you notice, they use in a whole grid paper, they didn't use the whole thing. You don't have to. But to find the area of the carpet, what you do is, you gotta find the area of this T. So area of the whole um, hole. So everything minus the area of the obstacles, including the start and the hole. So I find the area of the hole and all my obstacles plus my start is going to equal the area of the carpet. Does that make sense? Then I will give you the price for each square inch of carpet. Is everyone okay with that? That's what you're doing. Create your design. Please don't be boring and do the same shape every single time. That would not be a very fun course. Again, we're going to be voting on them to which course is the best, and we're going to play the game. How you play the game is you put your pencil on the start, and you close your eyes, or I won't look in this case, and I'm trying to make it to the hole. If I go out of the course, or I hit an obstacle, just say stop. Stop. That's the best I've done all day. One time it took me seven tries. All right, here we go. See if I can get it to two. So if I go past the hole, you just tell me to stop. Stop. Uh, stop. Oh, I want to move. All right, ready? I got three. Yeah. All right. So I got a birdie on this hole. That's how we will play the game. I'm gonna go through all of the courses or all of the holes. Questions? All right. I'm gonna go ahead and give you your partners at this time. What you're gonna be doing today is you are gonna be working on coming up with your theme. So our goal today is to create a theme with your group. I will also give you a folder. Everything from this project will stay in this folder and will stay in this classroom. That makes sense? All right, so whenever I get your group to tell you to go, you're finding your theme, writing your name on the folder, and assigning which holes each person's going to do. So let's say Maggie's doing holes one through three, Aiden's doing four through six, and Hudson's doing seven through nine. That's what I need to know. Once you've done that, and you can raise your hand. As I stated, this will all be done in class or for online students will be done at home, but it is worth 60 points. Have we ever had anything worth 60 points in here? No. The reason why it's 60 points is because it's really important that we review these topics. And we're using a lot of class time. So we have to make sure we are taking something out of it. 
We want you to have fun with this, but we also want you to have a good review of geometry so you're prepared to move in for that. This is an in-class grade, okay, which is worth 30% of your overall grade. If you do not take this seriously and you just mess around, your grade will tank. If you only worry about your theme and not about the directions of the different obstacles that you need to create, you will tank. You are about to move into seventh grade. Extracurricular activities are based off your grades, whether you can do them or not. This leads into junior high. If you're not passing these classes, there's a good chance you might not be able to play your first quarter of seventh grade, any activity. So please take this seriously. I don't mean this to sound like we can't have fun. It's meant to be fun, but it's also to get a good review. Or is everyone clear with that? Okay, again, probably not going to be any homework with this project, but if you don't come in and follow directions or do what's expected of you, then there will be homework. All right? That's all I have.